Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. time. Ladies and gentlemen, out to Boulder City, Nevada. There's Stephen Kravitz. Why he's living there, we have no idea, but he's not going to be living there much longer. Right, Stephen? Yeah, that's right. I'll be uh, back in Massachusetts uh, beginning of September. Back to the birthplace of comedy in this country. Well, back to where I was born and raised. That's the birthplace of comedy. Yeah. Well, yeah. I want to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you a question. I asked this of Bubbles, and I'm going to ask this of you. What to you, because you're a comedian, right, is, right. The, is the lowest form of comedy? Stealing. No, well, no, no. I mean, besides uh, what we all know is should have the death penalty with it. Uh, right. Yeah, stealing, stealing jokes. No. What is the lowest form of comedy? Well... Puppets, in general, creep me out. They yeah. just give me the willies, you know? I mean, is, is that well, com- nothing to do with puppets. Is that comedy or is that theater? Comedy, and they, you know, I mean, there's, what, Jeff, uh, what's his name, Durham? Oh, Jeff, Jeff Dunham. Oh, God, I hate him. Yeah, but he's really good at what he does. Yeah, he's really good at what he does, but he's crazy. Well, yeah, he talks to his hand all day. What do you expect? I, I know. I No, I, I tell the story. I've told this before. I was doing comedy tonight, right? I think it was okay. comedy tonight, yeah. And um, they had us down in the basement of the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the old Waldorf. Uh, okay. And uh, that, that was, I think, the name of the place. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. Anyway. We Doesn't were in, matter. We are in the basement. And uh, that short little midget photographer that used to take pictures in San Francisco until he died. Yeah, was, what was his name? Uh, Randy or something like that. I don't Randy know. Bachman. Randy Bachman. Bachman. You're right. God, how can I remember that name and I don't remember my wife's? Uh, well. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, we're down there, and of course, everything Randy shot was like up. <laughs> Same angle for every right. picture, Randy. He took, he took a picture of me that hung in the green room at the punchline. Yeah. So, so he put a picture. He, t- he p- took a picture, and he had me on one side. And he had Dunham on the other side. And in the middle was, I don't know, the grumpy old man puppet of his. Something like that, yeah. 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 And uh, as we're starting to, you know, uh, do this thing, uh, he looks over at me and he says, I hear, Alex, you don't like prop comics. And I look back at him and I said, no, it's not prop comics I don't like. It's ventriloquists. (laughs) <laughs> Dunham doesn't move a muscle. The dummy turns and bears his teeth at me. That's creepy. Cre- that's creepy. That's creepy. Yeah, yeah. I would not want a puppet in my house. Yeah. Um, I'd have to bury it in the backyard somewhere. Okay, so a ventri- a ventriloquist may be the lowest form of comedy, you figure? Actually, you know, marionettes. Uh, well, marionettes. Mar- marionettes become theater again. Okay, know? that's theater. Yeah. But so, but yeah, I, I don't really like puppet shows. Okay, you don't like ventriloquists. Yeah, I, I, yeah, because most of them, are, you know, I, yeah, you're right. I don't like ventriloquists. You know what it is? What it is when you talk about comedy, the kind of comedy you do, stand up, is raw comedy. Okay. Right. There's no. There's no. Finessing it's just you it. and a microphone. It's you, Alex. a it's microphone. You on an empty stage, and I'm one microphone. Right. There but now, by your wit. now you've got this dummy with you that you can blame everything on. <laughs> you know. I guess. You're not up there alone. It's almost the comedy I hate the most, and I said this to Bubbles, 
improv. Oh, is that right? Bad improv is just terrible. Most improv is bad. You're right. You're right. Yeah. You're right. And, and the reason I hate improv is it's a con. They, they it's act, a what? It's a con. They go out there and they act like they're going to they're gonna do something really different and special, you know, and they're gonna, they're gonna, it's all going to be improv. It's all going to be off the top of their head. But they've done it so many times that they know the right. answers they're going to get from the audience. And so they just say, uh, give me a, um, 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 a job, an occupation. And then they just wait right. for an occupation they've already done. Right. They say, okay, yeah, uh, a shoe salesman. And, uh, you know, what, what kind of place is it? You know, and then the people yell it out and they remember one that they, so they just, they, they've already done it before. It's not improv. All right, Alex. Yeah. I agree. I agree with you. Especially the ones that have been doing it a long, long time. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the improv players just want to be comics. The good ones are comics. Yeah, and they do, they do improv as kind of a skill. As kind of a, right. a, 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 a not even a skill, um, um, what we call, uh, uh, oh boy, what's the word I'm looking for here? It's like where you're teaching yourself something. It's, it's just, a, it's like a gymnasium. It's like working right. out. Okay. Right. I mean, I've worked with a bunch of improv groups. Yeah. And I mean, people go to see a comic and they don't realize that sometimes he's improving only this far in that right. you're looking for new material. And so right. you're trying Absolutely. out stuff. You're trying out stuff, and then maybe while you're trying that out, something comes to your mind, so you figure, I'll try that. And then right. if it works, you keep it in, and if it doesn't work, you don't keep it in. Right, but yeah, you actually you have a skeleton that you work around. You mm -hmm. have a skeleton that you know is gonna work, and mm -hmm. then you go out and play. Yeah. And kind of reroute yourself back into material, and then go off material. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So who are, who are the uh, stand-up comics that you would you like seeing you liked watching i used to like to watch bill hicks bill hicks was oh god wonderful i like steve wright in moderation yeah stephen wright i was watching some stuff on youtube with him he isn't around much anymore uh but stephen wright was he's the one joke comic it's just like right. one joke one joke one joke one joke right uh, but it's all monotone and after you know 20 minutes it's enough yeah yeah, yeah. But there, uh, who else is a comic like that that has a lot of jokes and the, it's not like they go from one joke to the other with any kind of uh, reason? Continuity. With any kind of continuity, it's just one joke after another. But right. I'm trying to remember right. who does that that's very good at that. And I'm, uh, somebody I was thinking about the other day. Bubs uh, is like that. Who? Bubbles. Bubs? Yeah. 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 Bubs is one joke after another. That doesn't. Right. Have, it's not like uh, people like Seinfeld will do a bit, and then he he's doing a thing on driving a car, and then all the jokes in that chunk right. will be about driving a car. With Bubs, right. he could be he does a joke, and then he goes to the next joke, and he goes to right. the next joke. You know? Right, and they're not, they're all non sequiturs. Yeah, you know they have nothing to do with each other. They're just separate jokes. Yeah. Now, how did you just how do you describe what you did and do? I call it anger comedy. Really? Yeah. I mean, when I'm at my best, mm -hmm. I'm usually angry at something. Yeah. I just thought about that this morning, actually. Yeah. A lot of improv. My, my set was always a lot of improv, which is why, you know, I work so well on your show. Because yeah. I was able to do things quick-wittedly. Yeah. Is that a word, wittedly? Well, yeah, I think so. Yeah, okay. Well, it's not in a, a quick, word now. Uh, okay, in a quick-witted manner. There you go. There we go. So that's how I, you know, I got a pretty good wit about me, and so I like to play. Yeah. You know, I always open up with material. I don't know, never open up with where you're from. Usually if somebody gives me shit, then I'll talk to them for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. And they're really good. Some people are really good, and they stop. When you stop with them and you move into a bit, they leave you alone. And in a bad audience member, somebody's a little drunk and wants to show that they're gonna screw up your act and they like to talk throughout your act. You know what I mean? Have mm -hmm. you had that happen? Me? Yeah. Uh, uh, but I never really did stand up. 
No, but when we did our shows, you knew if you got had the audience. Although all all the shows we did with you, the audience was all there. They were the same people who got up at the crack of dark. Well, they they, they the radio show. You're you're you're. I'm I made I spoiled you guys in that oh, yeah. when you got up to do your act because you had already been on my show a lot of times and they knew your pacing and your timing and right. your your little world that you create for yourself okay right. as a as a comedian that when you went out on stage you didn't have to do about 5 minutes establishing who you are and what your world is right and because of the show your show that we did we would develop a cult following it was weird. I would see the same people at my, all of my shows. Yeah. Well. And at one point, I turned to him and I said, "You know this shit better than I do. Why don't you come up and do it, and I'll watch you for a while." Well, I got up and I did stuff. Okay. Right. Uh, at these shows that we did, and I would do about ten minutes at the top of the show. Right. Uh, it was all pretty much ad lib on my part. Right. And people went, "Wow, you killed out there, boy. You, have you ever thought about doing stand up?" And I said, "The only reason I killed." is this is my audience. Right. And I'm right. already pre-sold to them, so all the jokes I'm doing are stuff they know about me and they expect me to say. Right, you right. Know, I said, if I were to take this act, what I'm doing here, and go to, oh, I don't know, Portland, Oregon, they'd tear gas me. No, if I go to Portland, Oregon, uh, they, what, what's funny about this guy? You right, know, because none of the jokes would land because none of the jokes were all my jokes were pre-sold. Okay. Right, right. I get, I get what you're saying. So with you, you know, you, you, your show was the straw that stirred the drink. You know what I mean? The comedy mm -hmm. drink. You you helped us develop comedy followings. We sold out every shows. Yeah. Every show I did with you was a sold out. Was a sellout. Yeah. Yeah. That, no. Yeah. No, not in the. He's not referring to the fact that we sold out. Uh, no, we but didn't it was sell, a out, sell out. But it was a, all seats were taken. <laughs> yes, all the seats were taken. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, I mean, the thing is, with a comic, any comic, they've all got their little world that they do their comedy in. Okay. Sure. And you have to yeah. establish your to a strange audience doesn't know you. You have to grab them and bring them into your world. And I always kind of, right. sometimes I ask comics, like, do you have a piece of material that you always do at the top of your act to a strange audience that establishes your, where you're coming from? Right. And it depends on my mood as I'm walking on stage. Yeah. I've been known to open up with, so I'm pumping this nun. Yeah. Okay. You know? Yeah. And, the, and then it kind of says how I'm going to set the tone for the rest of the night. Right. You know, and, and and Bubs comes out and does something like that. Like uh, right. somebody, uh, I think the one I always liked was uh, uh, somebody stole my identity. Well, good. Now somebody else doesn't have a life. <laughs> and that that tells you everything you want to know about Larry Bubbles Brown. Right. You know, right. Now right. you can now you can laugh at him. Uh, right. But Larry is something something unique, isn't he? He's always been something unique. Uh, and, yeah, he and, and I don't know if people listening to the show because I have them on, you know, every week, uh, know exactly what we're saying, because uh, he doesn't do material with me, and I don't expect him to. Right. You know, uh, but he is—he is, I think, one of the funniest comics alive. Oh, I agree. And he never wanted to be a headliner. Well, he did a good job at not being a headliner. He always just wanted to be the featured act, the middle act. Yeah. This is the guy that waited, went on the Letterman show, and they said, well, get another six minutes. Come on back and see us. You were terrific. And so 20 years later, <laughs> I think it was the longest stretch between two comic times on, on Letterman, you know. Oh, well, I'm sure it was 20 years. Yeah. In the meantime, Jake Johansson had done it 30 times, you know. Right, yeah. right, right, right. But, Right. Bubs, I don't think, Bubs, I don't know if he was afraid of success or he just didn't want to be successful. I think it's the latter. Uh, he didn't want I to be? He just, he, he just, no, that's part of his act is basically an extension of who he is. He's kind of a slump that kind of mopes around and complains. 
And he's not an unsuccessful comedian. I mean, a lot of comics love to have him open up for them. Oh, absolutely, because you, know? you know he's going to kill. Well, no, they, they know he's going to kill, but that he's not going to take the spotlight off them because they're the headliner. Right. Right. He's, the he's not going to do... I had an MC introduce me with my own material. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. That really made it difficult for you, didn't it? Well, no, I actually came up and I said, you've heard this joke because I wrote it, and let me tell you how it goes the right way. Oh, oh, boy. Hmm. Oh, I'd call him out on it. Yeah, Wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, I just looked. We've run out of time already. Are you kidding me? Yeah, no. It's just, like that. Like that. All yeah. right, Alex. Okay. Well, I'll be back. He'll be back, ladies and gentlemen. That, of course, is our dear friend, Stephen Kravitz. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Alex. See you, folks. Sixth year. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, yeah, one thing after another, huh? I, I had my audio down, so I didn't play the promo, right, the imager. That's what we, we call these Five imagers. years and still talking, hey, this an is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. With a wonderful Talk voice like of Rob Alfano, who has been the voice of uh, GabNet for God, I, almost as long as there's been a GabNet. So, thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, let me see here. What do I want to do? Uh, I guess I want to go talk to people on the program. Uh, if you don't know how to get a hold of us, go to gabnet.net. Down at the, on the right-hand side of the page, down towards the bottom, there's a uh, thing that says, let me read it to you. Let me go to it so I can read it to you. Uh, click here to join us at Showtime on Zoom. And then what you do is you just click on that. And guess what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can be on with our citizen panel and be part of it and hang out with us. And also, uh, you can go over to my Facebook page, uh, facebook.com forward slash A Bennett, and uh, the, the address is there, okay? The address is there. And uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, right at the bottom here, it says, uh, during the program, uh, you can Zoom us. And then it has an address there. Hold on a second. I got to go... This door isn't closed, and if I don't have the door closed, oh, you see I'm wearing my little, my new little uh, short pants. These are not underpants, but those are new short pants. I don't like them, so I bought a new pair. They're arriving in the mail soon. Anyway, um, just to, just to use that to join us and uh, be part of the citizen panel. Uh, let me see here. There's some people getting ready to be part of the citizen panel. Uh, and so let me uh, let me admit them here to the group, and uh, we'll just get them all together and get everybody. Uh, um, let's see here, and uh, let me see. And then I push a button here. Ah, hey, Robert, you're with us again tonight. Phil? Yes, sir. Robert's with us, Phil. Watch out. Ah, he's a nice guy, actually. Yeah, yes, he is a very I enjoy nice his, guy. I enjoy him. Yeah. By the way, you, you had what was that song you sang the other day about potato, potato? Oh, um, you say tomato, I say tomato. You say police, I say Gestapo. Yeah, that's the potato, potato, gest police, Gestapo. <laughs> Let's call the whole thing off. Okay, we're being joined by Charlene Martinez, who hasn't called in a while, but there she is. Ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing there, Charlene? Charlene, how are you doing? Charlene's audio isn't connected. Am I connected now? Yes, you are. Yes. Oh. Okay. All right. Good. Uh, all right. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Horse Lover Fat. <laughs> That's different. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm beginning to forget what your real name is. Oh, it's John. Oh, John. Oh, okay. <laughs> Man, horse idiot. lover fat. You know who horse lover fat is? No. On. <laughs> nobody's any Philip K. Dick fans out there? Uh, oh, okay. I, 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 I know Philip K. Dick. 
Yeah, uh, Bell is. Heard of him, but uh, but then again, Phil doesn't because he doesn't know Dick. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, uh. Now that that was a character in Ballas. Oh, okay. In fact, all the names I make up are from Vil Philip K. Dick movies. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, and and John's last name is. See, I mean, I keep forgetting because you keep get writing all these other. Larkin. Huh? Larkin. 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 Of course. Yeah. I should remember. It's the name of a street in San Francisco. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, boy, it is hot in here tonight. We have had such, we've been in the middle of the world's, right, Charlene? The world's disgusting. worst. Disgusting. Yeah, disgusting. World's worst uh, uh, stretch of hot weather and so on. And I, uh, You know, I always think of that Marilyn Monroe thing. We're having a heat wave. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's hot here. Uh, it, it's been, it was, uh, it was 93 today. And I've also been having these sinus headaches. You ever get these right now? Yeah, me it's too. Like, it's like pressure. You having them now lately? Really? Yep. Really? It's so, air conditioning can cause that. You know something? I I hate air conditioning. I I have to love it because I need it, but I I I I it's terrible. It's disgusting. Yeah. So whatever. So how are you Did all? Did you get this? What? I was going to ask you if you got those HEPA things yet. Yeah, no, talking no, about I, HEPA. I have a, uh, a uh, what do you call it, a filter, uh, what do you call it, air purifier. Purifier or whatever. Uh, yeah, and it's good. It's a good one, yeah, I think. I don't know. I don't know if it's doing anything. I don't know if this is like some phony thing with these air purifiers. And you, you, yeah, you who knows? Yourself. Mar Marjorie goes, the air seems fresher in here. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> like, <laughs> Every every third one's a placebo. Yeah, it's, it's that's a, right. yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, does it uh, and, and filter out COVID? Know. Huh? Does it filter COVID? No, <coughs> no, no. Um, that's that true. That that kind of HEPA filter would run you thousands of dollars. Okay, they do have one, uh, but it it uh, they, and they're hoping that some uh, restaurants and so on. Are going to start putting them in because if they yeah, start, supposedly if they, the dentists and stuff have that right, like a big HEPA filter that they read. Yeah, the but they don't have the, they don't have that one. Yes, Phil. I went to the dentist today and had my teeth cleaned, and the amount of PPE and the things that they do because of COVID is unbelievable. You know, if they use that Cavitron, which is the thing with the water, Marjorie had her, her Marjorie had her teeth done today too. Yeah, they, they, they had this thing that's like a vacuum cleaner that they put in front of you that sucks any uh, uh, of the moisture that goes in the air. Then you put this other thing on your chin, which uh, you hold there, and that is like a vacuum, and it's getting the vapor. Uh, and they change their masks and gowns, and they have the, uh, the, the uh, plastic shield. And they charge you an extra fifteen dollars for all the PPE changes that they're going to do. Plus, it takes a lot longer. Uh, and they said if they didn't have this vacuum stuff, all they could do is scrape, which yeah. I, I prefer to scraping. But uh, they say it gets uh, yeah better yeah. cleaning with the Dixie Cavitron. It does. Okay. Well, you know, whatever. I have no idea. Marjorie had to go get a tooth filled today because she had a filling fallout. Uh -huh. And uh, she said, that, you know, the, the woman was acting like she was diseased and, you know. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. She, well, they, they were just using good protocols. And, yeah, well, uh, I mean, are they doing that more to keep themselves safe or to make you feel safer? That's what I think. They want to keep both. themselves safe. It's both, you know. You know. Uh, it would have been nice if I could have taken the mask hey, off. But. By the way, I, I, I'm rooting for you guys out there in Texas, Charlie. Because oh. mm -hmm. only about 14,000 more people getting COVID, and oh, yeah. we're number four. We're number yeah. four. We'll probably uh, pass you on Friday. You think so? Yeah. Oh, boy. Good. Cause, and then uh, there's no other state that's closer, so uh, we're probably going to wow. stay at number four. But hey, we, Charlie, what about the, the shooting in Austin the other day? Uh, what's going on with the uh, riots? This is Texas. That had nothing to do with the riots, except that this was somebody, I guess, who was against the protests and ended up shooting one of the protesters. 
Oh, yeah. is that the one that the protester pulled a, a weapon on the guy? He didn't pull a weapon. He was he had a weapon. It's perfectly legal legal to have a, an open weapon in Texas. That's right. All he did was had a weapon. He did not pull it. He did not part. Paul pointed well, why it. Why did the guy get? Re, why did the guy get released? Uh, because they uh, was that the guy that got released, or was it the other yeah, guy? Yeah, the guy that, that shot him got yeah. released. Yeah, but they, I got, I have seen no explanation from the police as to why. Yeah, you know, I do a show on Mondays now, and it's it's very pleasant. <laughs> uh, and and uh, here we are, what ten minutes into the show, and Phil is already bringing up shootings in Austin and guns and everything. Yeah, am I right, Robert? You're on that show on Mondays. Yes. It, yes, it's very civil, and it, well, and I, I get really lots of nice comments on it, and it gets more viewers than this thing does. Well, More light. It's lighter. It's not lighter. It's not call. lighter. It's just it's more civil. Right. Nice. Well, what was uncivil about my question? Yeah. Uh, no, it isn't a question what was uncivil. It's just we couldn't get 10 minutes into the show without you bringing up a shooting somewhere. Or well, you guys were bringing or, 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 up the COVID and you were talking I, about. We were bringing COVID. up the COVID about going to your dentist and what they're doing at your dentist. Well, I did, uh, and then uh, all of a sudden you were talking about all Texas I'm being saying, number Phil, four. All I'm saying, Phil, is that, you know, we were going along pleasantly talking about having happy COVID talk. Yeah. And oh. and 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 uh, all of a sudden, out of a clear blue sky, oh, Charlie, what about that shooting in Austin? So you mm. draw the line at shootings. No, so I just say, I say, can't deaths. you wait? Can't you wait maybe 10 minutes before okay. getting into that? I just want to get this straight. You, know, you can talk about deaths in see, Texas see, this, and Florida. This is not as civil as our Monday show already. All right. So, I, I didn't say that was civil. Right. I'm not civil. I don't even like civil. Uh, I don't like civil either. But, uh, you know, the thing is. I, you, you, I just want to understand you. You know, I've known you a long time. I, you draw the line at shooting, so it's okay to die right, from. Let me I draw the, my line at shooting. I didn't well, say there was a line at all. I just said that we're not ten minutes into the show, and already, while we're having kind of just like chit chat, you bring up a shooting in Austin. Okay, so it's it's more than ten minutes if you count the monologue with the uh, comedian. What's his name? Guy you never liked anyway. Uh, the guy I never liked. Yeah, yeah. Who? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What's his Stephen name? Kravitz. Is Stephen that Kravitz. Kravitz. I like Stephen. I've always loved Stephen. Well, yeah, now. Like no, I always liked Stephen. You yelled at me a long time ago. Phil didn't like him. Stephen uh, Kravitz wanted to get on your show at Camel, and uh, he said to me, "Can you get me on the show?" I said. I'll see what I can do. I don't think Kravitz goes back. To, you, Kravitz doesn't go back to the camel days. Yes, he 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 doesn't because you wouldn't let him on. I wasn't doing a lot of comedians at that point, Phil. And it's I, not that I didn't like Stephen Kravitz at that point. I didn't know who the hell he was. I hadn't seen him perform, and so therefore, how could I have him on my program? He was now very it's officially uncivil. He what? was very aggressive. He was a very aggressive guy. No, he and wasn't. So my no, way he's of always a very, people. very sweet, decent, and non. Not, not in 1982 guy. or whatever it was. Uh, yeah, 82. I'm gonna have to ask him when he came to San Francisco because I bet he wasn't there. In, in, in what he is was. It, he was at Cobb's. He was at the door, and he says, "Can you get me on the show? Can you get me on the show?" And it was like two weeks after I wasn't doing the producing anymore, and uh, you said. Oh, you know, uh, tell me how many times, tell me how many times back in the day mm -hmm. you used my name to get laid. Thousands. <laughs> <laughs> Matter of fact, I, I remember there were times that Bobby Slayton, myself and uh, and Monty Hoffman would try to meet women that used to call into See, the people show. People don't know who we're talking about. Tell us, here. tell us the one that got laid, got you laid. None of them got us laid. I'll say the one. <laughs> Not one. <laughs> but but we did we uh, Don't tell me you didn't try to impress some woman that you knew me. Uh, uh, late once because uh, I met one in Lake Tahoe and I, I couldn't uh, wake up. Uh, 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 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, I mean, come on, you know. <laughs> You don't, you don't, you don't need me to be nice to you now. You got laid because of me. 
Well, hey, there was uh, we went out to breakfast a couple of times with some of the uh, uh, ones that I would pick up. You know. Oh, really? Meaning that breakfast that I used to pay for? Oh, no, you didn't pay for this one. This was in Mill Valley. Uh, uh, yeah. And I mean, I, if I, I, I would feel very bad today if I found out that I ever paid to get you laid. Oh, yeah. You know, the, the on any the level one we went with was um, uh, uh, Neil Schoen. What, what's his uh, group? Uh, Journey. Journey. Yeah. Yeah. She she worked for them. in the account uh, counting. I have no idea who you're talking. About. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you. <laughs> I knew Neil Schoen's ex-wife. Yeah. Well, I met her, too. Yeah. Yeah. At Camel. She yeah. was pretty aggressive, too. What do you mean aggressive? What is this? People are angry, aggressive. Angry. She was angry, not civil. Not the not the Shone's wife that I knew, except she was a little maybe she was a little angry at Neil. Yeah. Because he was a real prick, you know. But uh and, yeah, stu and stupid and, and stupid, I should add. Uh I, really I didn't stupid. Yeah, she told me once that she he went to um he went to Europe and she said, um, Did you go to France? She said, No, but I went to Paris. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> Was, yeah. You know, uh, Neil Schoen played with Carlos Santana when he was 16. He really? was in Santana's uh, band. Yeah. Really? That early? Yeah. Yeah. Well, That's, uh, I understand. Yeah. I never I never liked Journey, but I've been told he was a good yeah. guitarist, that he was a good guitarist. Yeah. yeah. But I Journey was, a, to me, it was, you know, it was Muzak. Yeah, yeah, it was Muzak. Did you hear uh, when Shaquille O'Neal went to Greece, somebody asked him, did you go to the uh, Parthenon? And he goes, I, I, I don't know. We went to a lot of clubs. <laughs> <laughs> well, Shaquille O'Neal was also the guy that said, I've won at every level except college and the pros. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway, so it, it's hot. I'll tell you, we were talking about the Parthenon, hottest place I've ever been in my life. Literally, yeah. noon at the Parthenon on a summer day. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking uh, uh, Jeff looks like he's nodding yes. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Is that sure. hot or what? Yeah. Uh, they, you know, I've been there. there's a whole I times when you go to Europe. No shade. It's it's terrible. It is. Yeah. They've had some summers. People are dying in the street. Yeah, well, I mean, I felt like I was literally bacon on a griddle. That's how I felt up there, because at the very top where the Parthenon is, it's like this flat rock, you know, and then the heat, the sun is just beating down on you, and I, I, I'll never forget that. Finish that thing. What? One of these days they're going to finish yes. that thing. Well, yeah, they, right. they, they are. I understand next year putting the sheetrock up on the Eiffel Tower. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so it'll 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 kind of be a little bit on its way to being finished. Yes, Chris Charlene. Mm -hmm. You know, before Phil brought up that horrible subject about the guns. Now, you know, I'm not a big, if I'm an Alex Bennett type fan, there's no way that I'm like a Regis Philbin fan. So I don't think I am. But like, what do you think about, you know, I mean, Regis was not that old, really. I mean, he was you know, 88. He well, yeah. oh, he was old then. But he, I mean, uh, well, no. You know, Regis is like a television icon or something, right? And, you know. I think he was one of the best. Yeah, yeah and he was, um, you know, my mother didn't really know who he was, although she thought she did. But he started out as the sidekick for uh, Joey Bishop, right? Yeah. Wow. And before that, he had his own show on mm -hmm. Westinghouse Network that replaced mm -hmm. the Steve Allen mm -hmm. show called the Regis Philbin Show. And the whole nobody oh, okay. knew who Regis was. And the whole publicity campaign was, who's Regis? Because mm -hmm. nobody knew who Regis Philbin was. And he was really a good host, but he wasn't established, so the thing didn't work. And then he went over and, and was, the, uh, was the sidekick to Joey Bishop. Mm -hmm. How many people here do you know who Steve... Well, uh, Steve... Allen. Allen, yeah. yeah. How many know who Joey Bishop is anymore? Yeah. <laughs> right, right. You know, I know you know, Kevin, but, you know, I mean, uh, we, we think that, oh... Paul Newman. You don't know who Paul Newman is? Ask some kid. He doesn't know who Paul Newman is. Right. Right? You're right, Alex. They don't know who anybody is. Yeah. Yeah. Race, huh? uh, car driver. Hmm? Racer. 
Paul Newman was? Well, Paul Newman, yeah, yeah he was a, race, yeah. a, car, a, car, a car racer. He was yeah. very successful with yeah. it, too. Hello to Brian Neary. Brian was on our Monday show with us, and with his daughter. Hey, Charlie, what do you think about that shooting? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, man, what the heck's going on? <laughs> I just want to start the show like Monday does. It's uncivil again. Yeah, every night it should be. Gee, how about all those shootings? How many shootings have we had? Well, you got to remember. You got to remember right? that when he, he let's when count he, the shootings. Uh, when you said you know, a shooting, a shooting in Texas, the... Phil, I went. So what else is new? Because I lived in that state, yeah. and when I lived there, they had an open carry law, uh, and there were no law. And every Saturday night. There were so many shootings and people killed in gunfights in bars in Houston, Texas, yeah. that we didn't report them as news because they were so common. And that's what happens when you <clears throat> go for the Second Amendment. Yeah. I, well, the, was, the, was it the chief of police that said it was, he got what was coming to him? Hmm? Well, chief of police said he got what was coming yes. to him. Really? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. This is wife, right, Tiffany? Yeah, she thinks I'm talking to a bunch of women on here. Yeah. <laughs> she knows my Phil. Tell her it's Jake from State Farm. You <laughs> <laughs> Hey, listen, she looks so young. She, I, see this guy right here? I, I thought she was your other child. <laughs> this guy was we're, a big we're shot. We're a bunch of ugly this birds. This guy used to be a big shot one time. Yeah, I used to be a big <laughs> shot. Now I'm now I'm just a massive failure. Uh well, that so gorgeous, gorgeous kids, gorgeous wife, Neary. I hope you say a nice prayer every night to God and thank Him. <laughs> I I say the prayer when I wake up. Thankful I'm alive still. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. But uh, what a lovely family you have. You're very blessed. I think that's wonderful. Yeah. Where is he, Alex? Again? What? It's in California. Uh, Where's California? Where Brian is in yeah, California. Yeah, Silicon Valley, right there. Yeah. Uh, he yeah. does have the light. Yeah. He and, and Brian could probably, uh, he and Kevin could probably get together at some point. Yeah. yeah and I also, so. um, who's the other guy on the treadmill all the time? Why can't I remember his name? On the treadmill? Yeah. Ray Brian. Yeah. Ray. 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 The Goomba. Oh, What's Ray, Ray Renati. Renati, Ray. yes. I, yeah, there I, go too. Down, I go down with Kevin's way, car shows and stuff like that. So we'll connect when this thing's all over. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be building my truck, so I'll be calling you for Chrome. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to call him for Chrome? Does he have Chrome? No, just, LA just chrome. the car stuff. Yeah, you got to go to L.A. to get Chrome uh, put on. You know, there's not too many places anymore that do Chrome. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, yeah, there are. What kind of truck, Kevin? 53 Dodge Pilot House. Do you know how long, oh, it's, wow. do you know how long it's been since I've owned a car? It's been, it's been, uh, when I come here, I came here in 2014 and sold my car just before I came here. <clears throat> two, 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 2013, excuse me. So it's almost 18 years I haven't owned a car. Seven years. Huh? 13? Oh, oh, three, you mean. Oh, three. Uh, yeah, oh, well, you three. lived in San Francisco all that time, all the way up to 2013? Uh, uh, was, uh, uh well, let's see here. No, wait a minute. I came here in in uh, two thousand four or three. Okay. Oh, okay. That yeah. would be seventeen. Years. So that'd be seventeen years. I haven't owned a car. I, it's unbelievable. I don't even know if I know how to drive anymore. Her her mom. I just when I just bought the Mercedes. Mm -hmm. Her mom drove up and said, "How many people live here? Why do you have five cars and there's only two of you that drive?" <laughs> Are you a collector? <laughs> Yeah, um, collect. Yeah, I guess play around. Yeah, yeah. In California, two cars per person. I had two cars. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I used to go to those uh, those good good guy shows with all the cars, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, I used to sell uh, um, timeshares down in Mexico, you know. So I put a booth there, <laughs> and we had a saying. It was like all the people that go to the good guy shows either have all their money tied up in their cars and they're broke. Or else they're broke and they wish they had money to get tied yeah. up in their cars. By the way, let yeah. me let me ask Robert a question um, because we I mentioned this the other day, but you wrote me a note and you said something and I went, "Wow," you know, and that was that you were accepted to West Point. 
Yes, I was. I wanted to go there since I was about eight years old. My parents took me up on a sort of a day trip and I fell in love and I determined that I was going to go. I got accepted. I got the commission. And then my mom took ill and it was pretty clear that I was needed at home to help out. So my duty was to stay back. Mm -hmm. And I wound up going to a local college. And within a year's time of missing out on West Point, I was protesting the Vietnam War. Wow. <laughs> Things well, who, changed radically who, for me. Who uh, sponsored you for the West Point? Isn't it got to be a senator or a congressman? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. A man named Dominic Daniels. Uh, I didn't, I don't know. Yeah. I was very impressed with that. I don't know why, because I'm against armies and wars and things yeah, like that. Back, but... I don't know why I, you should be. Um, no, I'm, I, I'm, impre thinking... I'm, I'm impressed because not everybody gets commissioned oh, to West yeah. Point. Right. Okay. It's an honor. Hey, I used to, I, where I grew up, I, it was across the river, and I could see West Point from Peekskill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you were at the other college, did you just look around some stupid people and say, you know, I could be in West Point right now. Well, I got it. You know, Brian, it's funny you say that. When I first got to the quote unquote local college, I, I think I had an attitude, I, I, you know, not a great attitude about studying, not a great. I, I was kind of sour about the fact that that dream of mine didn't work out at that time. Right. Now, I would have graduated West Point in 72, so I would have been shipped over to Vietnam as a second lieutenant and holding oh. an ace of spades. So I might not be sitting here talking to you all right now. So, you know, in the end, yeah. life. Were those guys that they, Robert, were those the guys that used to frag the second lieutenants? Yeah. Well, a little. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, you, know, I you I, ended up at a hospital. I got to go get my remote control for the air conditioning. This is getting weird in here. Uh, oh, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you one story while Alex is gone about going up to West Point to do my orientation. And believe me, I'm just reporting a story. This isn't an opinion of mine. I have a lot of dear friends that are ex-Marines. But anyway, um, we did the orientation with one of the members of the football team at the time. And we were walking through the campus where suddenly across the road were several Marines in full dress uniform. Mm -hmm. And this guy that was running the orientation turned around and looked at us and said, "Does anybody is anybody here able to um, determine what branch of the service those gentlemen are from?" Mm -hmm. So I wanted to be slick. I raised my hand and I said, "I believe they're Marines, sir." And he said, "That's right. Do you know what Marines stands for?" And I said, "No, sir." And he said, "Muscles are required. Intelligence not essential." <laughs> <laughs> is isn't West Point Army? Yes. Yeah, of course, yeah. And you know the rivalry between the various branches. That's what it was all about. You know, it, it, right. I don't even think he meant defense, but right, well, I think every, everybody everybody at one another. When I was in the Navy, we hated the Marines. I mean, because Marines were um, Marines are part of the Navy. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, we call them. You know, they were jarheads. Mm -hmm. they, they weren't anything else. You talk about them as the jarheads, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 we we thought they were kind of silly. Alex? Uh, yeah. Oh, is Robert from New Jersey? or? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, what part? And a town called Skillman, which is a mile oh, from... Oh, Houston. that's right. I, I was going to say what exit, because you know that joke, when he's from New Jersey, it's what exit. What exit, but I, yeah. I know, I know Skillman. Um, Johnson & Johnson is yeah. there now. Like, yep. Okay. yep, yep, yep. When I you said that, that's when I knew where you years, were. I guess, eight, almost eight. Mm -hmm. It's really rural there, though. Very rural. I yeah, think, it right? is. Actually. So here in New York, we uh, um, uh, Cuomo announced today that Eastman Kodak got a, um, a, a, a whole potload of money to start producing chemicals to help f fight pandemics. Uh, and they're going to be produced in New York, so we don't have to go to China or places like that in order to produce them. I thought Kodak, Eastman Kodak was history. I, I thought they went bankrupt and uh, everything got uh, sold I, No, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me go find it because I threw the thing and I put it in the trash. Cause sure I wasn't know. Pfizer? No, it's not Pfizer. It's, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I may be wrong. Wait a minute. Where, where is, where is? People don't use too much uh, film anymore. Hmm. Oh, there. Here it is. I didn't throw it in the garbage. 
Um, we have exciting news today. Eastman Kodak Company, hmm. a storied New York manufacturer based in Rochester, was awarded $765 million in federal loan under the Defense Production Act. This loan will allow Kodak to create a new business unit, Kodak Pharmaceuticals, dedicated to producing pharmaceutical wow. ingredients that are essential for vital medications. New York's wow. long-term support for Eastman Bu Business Park helped allow the company to take advantage of this opportunity. Today's announcement means 300 direct jobs and 1,200 indirect jobs for New Yorkers. More importantly, we'll help ensure that Americans can, pro can provide our own needs in a pandemic like this one. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, wow. You know. Is this uh, state support or federal? Hmm? Uh, well, who uh, federal. created federal. support with state federal. or federal? Federal? Federal, yeah. So it was that damn right. Trump, huh? Yeah, I guess it was under the Defense Production Act, whatever that is. Yeah. Uh, that's what they wanted them to in, uh, use to, uh, to make PPE and, and ventilators. Yeah. But yeah, the, Ford did that, right? They started doing other things. Yeah, yeah, but they, uh, well, Trump's they, getting very nice. Actually, he's playing very nice. Have you noticed this, Robert? He's playing very nice. I saw his press conference today, and he's very nice and polite to the press. He's it's it's election time. You know, it's kind of like you know what it is. It's like when New Year is coming, uh, Christmas is coming, and the landlord, the not the landlord, but your super never talks to you. But all of a sudden, about October, he gets really nice. Did you did yeah. you catch the line where he said, I don't understand people love Fauci and they love Dr. Burks, but nobody likes me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I thought to myself, you know, I took two classes in child psychology and I know enough to know that that's a needy individual. Yeah. Yeah. Bill says all the time, nobody likes me. And, on he, show. and he repeated that twice. <laughs> he repeated that twice, not once, but twice. And he re retweeted the lady with the demon sperm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh yes, self-effacing. There was this you know? woman. There was this woman. This doctor, and yeah. a couple of other doctors who all got together, had a little press conference. They had a video of it. They put it up online, in which they say that uh, the COVID's all a scam by Dr. Fauci, and um, uh, co uh, what is it? Uh, uh, what's that drug that? The hydrochloroquine, hydrochloroquine uh, it worked and that it, it should be the first line of defense against COVID and blah, blah, blah. And he retweets this. And then when I think the uh, social media groups like Twitter and Facebook suddenly find this thing is on their on their site, uh, they they ban it. They just that was dying. Yes, yeah, alien DNA. Don Jr. did it, but up. also also Daddy. Yeah. Daddy did it as well. Yeah. <laughs> like and then he went on and defended them and said, well, you know, they seem like they know what they're talking about. They were all doctors. It's a very nice lady. Well, if he uh, won't listen to Fauci, but he'll listen to these quacks, that's pretty amazing. She seemed very yeah. nice. She seemed very nice. The one thing I, I wish her the best. best. I wish yeah. her the best. I wish yeah. her the best. <laughs> they, they kept talking about no teacher has ever died from a student from COVID and all this stuff. Okay, here's somebody who wants well, in. Here's somebody well, who wants in 918 oh no. TU. Who could that be? I got 11. Huh? If you put that in, you got 11. Well, let me see who it is. It might be somebody or not somebody, but if it isn't, I'm getting rid of them immediately. Uh, uh, hello, hello, are you there? Who is this? Okay. Well, uh, well, that's they didn't they didn't come in. I, I I admitted them and then they didn't come in. So it ain't John. John's already here. Yeah, yeah. There, Must not have had a mask on. Yeah. There's yeah. a YouTuber. There's a YouTuber that goes to and does these bombs, but he videos it. But he'll go like he was the, these old people like we're doing exercises on Zoom, <laughs> and then he gets on there and he has his little monkey and the monkey sort of peeking over and peeking <laughs> over. And it's hilarious. He goes on all these different Zoom. He does Zoom bombs, but he does these characters on this. Well, we're a full house, right, Phil? Uh, no. Uh, right yes, we yes, we are. are. I've, been, I've had it up for quite a while now. So. Yeah. If you had the other guy, then you would have. Yeah, but you know who knows who he was. Simon. But anyway, so, uh, you here. know, I mean, um, uh, it's... Uh, <laughs> uh, nobody likes me. Yeah, nobody likes me. Nobody likes <laughs> me. I don't know why they like him. I hired him. 
he did. didn't. He lied about the, uh, no, he you lied didn't. About the Yankees' first pitch, too. They never invited him to throw out the first pitch. But he's going to go so he can throw out the first pitch, and they don't want oh, him but to. But he lied. He said, oh, I can't. Oh, yeah, that's right. They don't they want him. They him. Yeah. He, he declined, I thought. No, he didn't decline. No, he said he was going to, was and they said, we don't want you to. And he wanted to do it because guess who got to throw out a pitch? Ouchie. 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 That's got to be tormenting him. Oh, it, and uh, obviously. It, and it wouldn't be on opening day. That's the whole thing. Even Fauci was opening day. That's even more special than just going out there any yeah. day. Yeah. 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 And I'd like to see his fat ass try and throw that ball. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> well, he He'll made probably have toilet paper hanging out of his shirt he in the back. that date, apparently. What they weren't, they didn't. He made up that date. They didn't have him on the on the schedule. He just said yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, I know. They never invited him. It's amazing. Did, did anybody see said, "Oh, well, I can't make it anyway"? Did anybody like see he, what? Oh, uh, see Barr's testimony. Yeah, I I gotta say something, and I don't know if you people feel this way about it, but as I watched it, I was pissed off at both the Democrats and the Republicans. But oh. if it wasn't the Republicans sitting around trying to kiss Barr's ass and laud him for all the wonderful things he has done and how the president's being mistreated and blah, 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 blah. And then you go over to the Democrats, and now they've got this guy who they've been trying to get to sit in that seat for how long? A long time. And they don't ask him any questions. They ask him questions, but they don't let him answer them. And my feeling is, if you're holding a hearing and you're asking him questions... Don't you want answers? Did he you? Was, did he he was filibustering, though. No, he wasn't. And he'll lie. You know, he'll just uh, go Adler on. got in a car accident this morning, and uh, he, yeah. he was late. Maybe maybe he was flustered. You know? Maybe he's Antifa. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, uh, you're right about that, Robert, that, that uh, he does have a tendency, bar to filibuster. In other words, each of these people, they have to change the rules of those hearings. OK, that five minute rule is ridiculous. It's got to be like you get to ask one question. OK, and then you sit back and you get the answer. But and then it would prevent somebody like Barr from wanting to filibuster. But what he does when somebody asks him a question, he will then filibuster, filibuster, filibuster till the person's time has run out. So now the new way of handling this is for the person like the Democrat who's asking the question to never give him the opportunity to answer the question because they know he's going to filibuster. They so, didn't want him to answer the question. They wanted to. No, they wanted him to answer well, the questions, but he would then filibuster. He wouldn't give them an answer. Let's take one example. Well, here, here, here. Yes or no? Yes or no? Robert. Yeah. Let's Robert. take one example. Yeah. Let's take the example of uh, Cicilline from Rhode Island asking him, is it acceptable for a president to accept help from a foreign country? And Barr's first answer was, well, it depends on what kind of help. Yeah. So Cicilline repeated, is it okay for a president to receive any kind of help from a foreign power? And suddenly Barr backtracked and said, no. Well, so I, he had I, an opportunity even, to answer no. the right way the first time. What yeah. if it was military aid or something for the country or it was he help was, at disaster? Specifically talking about help for an election. He had It had nothing to do with foreign aid. Well, maybe the second thing that was curious was they asked Barr, Swalwell asked Barr, are you familiar with the following one of Trump's tweets? And he read what the tweet said regarding Roger Stone. And Barr says, nope, I'm not familiar with that. I don't read the president's tweet. Well, that's interesting because this tweet is quoted in the Mueller report, which Barr found Every reason to summarize for the American people, apparently without having read it. Yep, yep. And yeah. then he said that Trump's tweets make it hard for him to do his job. Yeah, he back. He kind of backtracked on that one too, didn't he? Well, I mean, yeah. it, it Barr is a um, um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Stooge. And no, no. He's his a, his attitude is uh, uh, it's it's just a unpleasant attitude. Okay. Nice when you can't be bullied uh, by bullies. Uh, Phil, let me finish, please. Is that what you want in power? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but 
uh, he is an unpleasant person. I, mm -hmm. You're not, never going to get a straight answer out of him. Uh, he is going to say, well, you know, to give me, he, he, he's, he's smart in, in the way that he gets out of, wiggles out of the whole thing. In that respect, he's very good at that. And that's what they were fighting against. And that's why this whole five-minute rule has to be done away with, and it should be like, you get two questions, right? Uh, then somebody like Barr is not going to do that necessarily because it's not to his advantage to do it. But it is to his advantage to do it to, when he starts answering the question to try to run the clock out. And that's where the whole thing falls apart. And that's why you have six hours or five hours, however long it was, of, uh, of, of the Democrats assailing him, essentially, without really getting an answer out of him, and the Republicans not asking him any questions either because they're just sitting there saying, hey, oh, the, and it was so terrible what happened to the president, when blah, 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 blah. You know, it, it just, it was useless to even have him there. Saturday Night Live can do a great skit on that one. Yeah. Yeah, if they ever have a chance to work together again. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But I mean, you know, it's it's uh, it's it's incredible, uh, and I, so I kind of felt I watched it and I was just irritated by the whole thing. I just said, well, "Why are they doing this?" You know, did you feel that way, Robert? That, that not much I was felt, being I, accomplished. I, I don't disagree with you. I I'm I'm a political junkie, so I watched in rapture. But um, I, I I don't I do find that those committee hearings are generally useless. They tend to be speeches more than fact finding um and on, bo on right. both sides by the way not oh yeah. yeah yes or no answers are are sought after but they're impossible on one side Barr was basically being asked by republicans a question and he wouldn't answer that question he would just you know speak speechify about something else that had happened earlier in the proceedings that really had no bearing on what was being asked so yeah, it's frustrating, no doubt. Yeah, it's very frustrating. Yeah. But anybody else see it today? Yeah, I did. Yeah. You did? What did you think, Jeff? I, I think these guys are not doing a good job. If their job is not to say anything, then they're wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I really wish that, that somehow that the people in the Congress and the Senate would have would have responsibilities to answer these questions. Yeah. And right now they don't. He uh, he's he, you know he um, he was amazing. I mean he's he's uh, I'm trying to think what the word is that I'm looking for, but he's pompous if nothing more. You know he's yeah. he has a very pompous personality. And it, it's and the look on his face constantly was, I don't really need to be here. Yeah, I'm doing you a favor, busy. you know. When he isn't doing anybody a favor, if the Congress asks him to appeal, appear, you know, subpoenas him, he's got he should be able he should show up. He was not subpoenaed. He he was there voluntarily. Yes, we know that, Phil. Finally, because he'd been subpoenaed a lot and has never shown up. What do you have to say about that? Well, I guess he showed up when he was ready to show up. Yeah, right. Uh, it, it was Trump that asked uh, that uh, defied the subpoenas because the subpoenas were coming out around the time of the um, uh, what was it that they did to Trump? They uh, uh, impeached. So uh, during the impeachment hearings, uh, he was being subpoenaed and uh, none of the Trump White House appeared for those subpoenas. Yeah. And they should have all been thrown in jail for not showing up, but. I guess uh, he was able to, yeah. to take care of that without getting thrown into jail. Yeah. So uh, when Trump loses, how do how do we keep this guy uh, from ruining the country in the two and a half months? He's not going to lose. Huh? I think that you guys are such a minority with big, big mouths that, uh, and you make a lot of noise and a lot of smell. But you know what? You're you're the minority. You're small. There's so few of you, and oh, you're crazy. You know, the end result is going to be 
four more years of Donald J. Trump. Why don't you put your money where your mouth yeah. is? Yeah, right. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'll, I'll take, take a wager, bet. even money, with you any day on the election. Any. All right. How do we, <laughs> pay, how do we uh, pay off? Uh, when uh, uh, do we send it to Alex and and let him hold hold it? Winner. That'd be fine with no, me. No, you you can just you just on your honor. The loser I'll pays. Yeah, I'll I'll pay. Pay. You don't want to be a welcher on this program. No, You'd I don't. Never well, be able to show I'm up. Never welched. Well, but if okay. he doesn't neither leave, did, neither did I. If he right. doesn't leave, though, we, uh, but we still win if he doesn't leave and he loses the no, vote. No, because he won't have to leave because uh -oh. he is going to be. Well, wait a minute. Well, how much? How much uh, money? Let's you have a much? nice gentleman's bet. I'm not a big better. How oh, much? Oh, I see. What? Hundred. Twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. Hundred. Are you yeah. out of your mind? Twenty bucks. It is. Twenty. Is that? Is hey, that you don't want to break your wallet. Uh, yeah. Apparently, yeah. apparently, yeah. If, yeah. apparently yeah. Yeah. if you really yeah. believed what you're saying, Phil, you'd bet a thousand. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter. You, 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 no, a bet. Are, just you, are you? Wait a minute. Are you sure? Are you sure that you're right that he's going to win? Well, I'm twenty dollars sure. Well, that's twenty dollars sure. Are <laughs> you a thousand dollars sure? That's tip money. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'm not a better because I think betting is suckers. Oh, I see. Okay. okay. Put your socialism. Put your socialism check you know, on it. Nice gentleman's wager. Fine. Of, uh, Fine. And, uh, you know, you, you put some money where your mouth is. Fine. You know, it doesn't have to be uh, the world. Plus, put your, uh, put your I think we're getting the idea that Phil has his doubts. I don't have my doubts. Yes, I'm you do. To put Twenty bucks on it. Are you willing to put a thousand on it, Phil? If you're that certain of it, you're gonna, uh, it's going to be it's money in the bank for you. Hold it, tough guy. How about giving me odds? My twenty to your thousand. You're the one that had all the money in your life. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Phil. Phil, Phil, that's not what we're what we're talking about here. Yeah, yeah. You're sure. You're sure. Wait a minute, thousand, Phil. Phil, calm down, Phil. Calm down. You're sure he's going to lose? Then you put up the thousand, Phil. It's your thousand. Uh, I put up the twenty Ooh. bucks. He puts. Uh, up I'm going to tell. I'm going to tell. I'm going to tell you why he's going to lose. And I saw a yeah. poll today on it, and and it, and it was exactly the way I think about it. And that is that they took a poll to see how many people uh, were going to vote for Biden, and the majority, a, a large amount, enough to win in the poll, said they would vote for Biden. Then they asked if they wanted Biden. They went not necessarily, but they don't want Trump. Okay, and, those, and I think that's what's happened. I think in the last four years, this guy has bought so much bad will. Nobody likes me. <laughs> that's that, it, well, yeah. nobody does. Uh, we'll see. Wait a minute, John. Twenty did, bucks on it. Oh boy, big spender, John this, Larkin. You know, I'm, I'm going to feel to bad taking your money. I, I spent more money than that today enjoy. for an attachment to to fix my Dyson vacuum cleaner. <laughs> you know, it was First 25. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, John Larkin, you had your hand up, and then. Uh, Shit, mm -hmm. I just I lost my chain of thought. Hang on. Um, okay. Well, Charlene had. Oh yeah, her, yeah. Oh no, he he could um, he he could win lose the uh, popular vote for like. For, for about five million votes, they say, and still win the uh, the. Um, We're talking about the election, not the popular vote for this bet. Yeah, well, uh, oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm just. And I saying, don't want to hear you crying later that it was rigged, mail-in oh, ballot, oh, that oh, shit. Yeah. I don't yeah, want to. I, I want to take the bet too. I want to. They asked Barr. They asked Barr today about the mail-in ballots. Yeah. Yeah, and he said that he, he thought that there was a possibility for corruption. Of course, he's the attorney general, so if he really felt that that was an issue, he could do something about well, it. Well, well Trump's the already corrupting the no fucking proof. post office. He, he installed his own goon to run the post office, and that yeah. goon is slowing the whole thing up. He's fucking the whole uh, postal service up. I, I bought a book uh, from somebody about... Two weeks ago, normally it takes four days to come. It's yeah. two weeks and it's still not fucking here. Yeah, well, have Robert. you ordered anything through <laughs> UPS lately? You think the post office is screwed up. UPS is the worst at delivering anything. What do you mean? I get stuff fine from there. Yeah, same here. I, I well, I get stuff almost every day. I and, do too. Uh, 
and I wait sometimes weeks. I and, do and too. they say that they delivered it, and they didn't deliver it, and then they say they're going to deliver it. You oh, bought it's a mandolin. Right. It came in three days from from. This, uh, this means yeah, yeah, but Phil, I bet Fauci, I bet Fauci part. gets his packages. Oh, he gets them. Okay. <laughs> they like them because they like them. Yeah. Hey, Robert, Robert, downstairs in John Larkin's place. There's the yarn with all the pictures and all the conspiracy theories all on the wall, probably all around in the ceiling. Everything. I, I tell you, if Trump comes, the horse to San lover. Sorry, horse lover. If, if Trump comes to San Francisco, he better not drive down Leavenworth. <laughs> yeah, are you over by St. Anthony's? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm in the tenderloin. Yeah. Yeah. I make the left there all the time when I'm uh, coming back from Saks. Why does every kind of thing come back to your life? I make it made a left turn near your place. This is the it comes back this is the mind. ultimate <laughs> egotistical <laughs> reference. Hey, did you hear that about hey, that big fire hey, in San Francisco? No. Oh, oh, uh, what did they try to burn? Uh, it, no, no, it, it was open. it burned this morning. It was uh, it was like a almost every single uh, firehouse in San Francisco was there and they were running out of water because the city didn't have the water to put the fire out. In fact, yeah, it's still I, going. I read an article about those cisterns that they built yeah. after the... How about the cisterns? shootings? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and those <laughs> have millions of gallons of water for fighting fires in San Francisco. Uh, no, the San Francisco's uh, got a shitty water system. I mean, it's got really good clean water for drinking, but the system is pretty weak for putting out fires. You know what has the best water in the world? Manhattan. It's rated the number one water, right, Alex? Says who? Not really. Oh yeah, Manhattan then water. Then how is... come we buy it in bottles? <laughs> uh, that's Stockers. because you're being conned. But Manhattan water, they don't even have to add anything to it. It's so good. Who right? said? Uh, yes, they have to water? add stuff to it. The public water in. Yeah, the Manhattan? public water. Really. Trump yeah, invented in water, didn't he? That water comes right from the yeah, Sierra Trump Nevada. invented water. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Hi, Tony. He's up again. I got to help her in the bathroom. What? Tony, wake up. What, what's your mother? You got a problem with your mother? Well, she's got to go to the bathroom. Sometimes I got to help her in with the walker. She gets mad at herself and she can't fall asleep late at night. <laughs> I hear her hey, this is what he gets paid to do. This is his job. I'm, actually, I'm off duty right now. Are you oh, off duty? Tony, you, oh, you need a bidet so you don't have to wipe it. I'm telling you, she never sleeps. I'm coming already. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, there's the wallpaper. Song. There's the wallpaper. Oh, my God. Yeah. And, and the, the curtains. <laughs> and the chintz curtains. Yeah. Alex? Yeah. Okay, I'm probably going off the topic or something, but you mentioned Biden. Yeah. Now, it brought to mind, they keep mentioning that he's going to, you know, uh, use a woman as his running mate or whatever. And then they keep saying there's this rice woman that he's, you know, thinking. Yes. Now, is she related to Condoleezza Rice no, or no? not at all. No. no. Not at all. So, okay, it's just yeah. a coinky dink there, right? She said yeah. it's a rice right. thing. She was, okay. uh, what was her job? She was ambassador to the U.N. at one point, I believe. Yeah, yeah. under uh -huh. Obama. <clears throat> What's her first name? Deborah Rice or Susan? Susan. Susan, Susan. Rice. Susan. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, because I thought maybe she was related to Condoleezza or something. Mm -hmm. uh, she, she was the one that uh, uh, came out and made the announcement about the video and, and, and yeah, so because she got that. She was told that by the CIA. Yes. Yeah, I understand, but she would. That's uh, but what position? Would she have held in order to do that in the Obama White House? Uh, she was, I I can't remember what she was at the time. I think she may have been the ambassador to the UN. Yeah, but why? If she was ambassador to the UN, why would she be make, making that announcement? He had uh, another was. post at some point. Yeah. National Security Advisor. She she exactly. Exactly. Did, yeah. did she make? Yeah. Did she make it to, to ambas, uh, ambassador at the UN, or was she up for it and then they didn't give it to her because I, I, of that I, whole flap over the? Uh, the and then that other information. woman they think is going to get mad, the one that had the busting incident with Biden, you know, she made that comment, and they think that that's why he's not choosing her now, right? Kamala Harris? Kamala Harris. Kamala, yeah. yeah. Kamala Harris, yeah. Yeah, I, um, um, I, I think it'll be, it'll probably be Rice, or it'll be, uh, there's, a talk, there's talk about that, uh, 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 what do you call it, mayor, uh, mayor of, uh, of uh, Atlanta. Atlanta, yeah. Yeah. Uh, she's very good, uh, but I think uh, Rice, I think, is very smart, very intelligent, 
uh, very yeah. capable. Yeah. And it has been, and has been in, it has, has been in, in government service for a long time. And so she knows her way around, you know. She uh, also checks a box. Like if you were to pick Biden's strength, it would probably be domestic issues. And yeah. Susan Rice would, you know, give some weight to foreign relations, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. But then again, you know, you could say, what the hell does the uh, does the vice president do? Yeah, not much. Uh, well, it depends on the administration. I mean, when you yeah. had Bush, Cheney was more the more was almost the president elect. Yeah. You know, by uh, by by <clears throat> by the fact that he did everything and made a lot of those decisions. Uh, whereas I think Pence just sits there until he waits for Master to call him with the dog whistle, and then he goes and does his bidding. You know, uh, uh, Susan Rice can mend fences around the world. I think. Yeah. Well, we're, there are going to be a lot of fences to mend. Yeah. You know, we're going to have to go back to all our uh, all our foreign people, all our foreign countries, and reestablish goodwill with them. And yeah. as to whether they will trust us or not. Is yeah, it, he's blown our trust. Look what we did to the trust. Well, the reason why the, the trust may be harder to get back is because the American public did vote for this guy. So yeah. their, their thinking would be, well, you know, yeah, now we got Biden, and he's a nice guy, it looks like he'll be decent to us and so on, but what happens the next time if the American time. public decides to vote for Hitler? Yeah, you know? yeah the so, American public didn't vote for Trump. The Russians installed Trump. Well, we can say that all we want, but the fact of the matter is the rest of the countries go, hey, you know, I, who was it that I had on, um, uh, what's his name, a, a British comedian, John uh, Oliver. A, a Stephen Fry. Oh. I had Stephen Fry on my show, and this was at a time when, uh, when Bush uh, won for president by an act of the Supreme Court, as you may remember. Yeah. And uh, I said to him, so what do they think of us in England? And he said, well, in England, they, they think they feel sorry for you, that you had that election stolen from you, and that the wrong person got into office. Uh, and we will feel sorry for you until you vote for this guy again, and then we won't. And mm -hmm. I think that's really what it's all about. I think there are a lot of people ready to forgive us this one Aggression, okay, uh, and digression, but I don't know if they're gonna if they're gonna you know give it to us again. I don't think they're gonna be as forgiving next time. Would you agree with that, Robert? I'm not sure. Yeah. I, I really don't know what to expect. Um, the whole world's in turmoil of some sort or another. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Now, what I want to know, what I want, uh, what I want to know, oh, my, my friend Shecky, uh, who's uh, said the other day on our show here that uh, I said, what do you expect um, after the election? He says, well, there's a chance very soon we'll have a civil war in this country. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, we're getting to that. You know, what you're seeing, you're not seeing anarchy in the streets of Portland. You're not seeing anarchy in the streets of wherever, you know. What you're seeing is a revolution. You know, what you're seeing are people rebelling against the government, a mm -hmm. government they feel is, is, is denying them freedom of speech. I mean, when you look at Portland, Portland was almost asleep by that time they got this whole thing got started up again. Mm -hmm. They had done most of their demonstrating, and there were a handful of people there every night, and nothing much was happening. And now that those thugs, those jackbooted thugs came into town, everybody's getting together like crazy and showing up every night by the thousands. You know, they only incited more of a riot going on there. What do you think, Kevin? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, it, it's, it, it's kind of sad what, they, what they've done there. Uh, you know, I mean, they took a, a manageable situation and turned it into a, just an absolute horrible thing. And eventually those jackbooted thugs are going to kill somebody. 
You know, it's just bound to happen. I mean, you can kill somebody with tear gas. Yeah. Uh, or with rubber bullets. <clears throat> yes, John. Yeah, I saw on, uh, I think it was YouTube or Twitter, they had uh, some um, undercover, I mean, uh, people wearing non-uniforms uh, kidnapping people off the street in Manhattan today. What? Yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah it was um, just some guys, they just pulled up, and there was some kind of protest going on, and they just grabbed this person and and started throwing them in the, uh, into a van, unmarked van. Really? Yeah. I didn't hear about that one. Did you guys hear about this? No. No. Go on Twitter yes, and look, look at Chris Chris Hayes's uh, Twitter feed, and you'll find it. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, it's not good. I'm, what I want to know is, where is Antifa, and how can I join them? Yeah. Where, yeah. where, where do I send my money and get where, a hat? Where do I send my money, get a hat, or where do I go to join them? You know, I figure... Uh, uh, because I read about what Antifa was. It goes back into the 1800s or something like that. And they're anti-fascist. And they are anti-white supremacist. Uh, and they're, they're really, uh, if, if they actually exist, which I really don't believe they do at this point, you know, um, much like the yippies really didn't exist, okay? Um, and yet we had everybody believing they did. Um, um, uh, you know, I, I'd, I'd really like to join them if they really exist. Yes, Phil. Phil believes they exist. R had a uh, good uh, example. He said that they were, you know, very. they're just individual people that seem to congregate once there's an event, and then they organize when there's an event. Uh, you know, with... Um, the cells, the terrorist cells that uh, that they have, the um, what, what what is it? Uh, um, Boogaloo boys. Uh, what, what say again? Boogaloo boys. Boogaloo boys. No, no. Uh, they uh, in Iraq. Uh, they're they're you know, and Iran. There are these terrorist cells. Uh, you mean ISIS? ISIS. Well, yes, uh, ISIS and and others. Uh, and they Al-Qaeda? and these cells are individual cells. Well, with Antifa, oh, oh, what uh, Barr said, oh, yeah. well, that, uh, oh, wow. they're individuals, but yeah. then there's an event, and they congregate at the event, and then they organize. It's like they have a group of uh, uh, rules. Oh, I see. In other uh, words, what it is, how did, you how should... How did you know this? Can I say something? Well, because he's the... He's the attorney general. That's how he knows. Yeah, and he's a well, lying yeah. sack of shit who's trying to make you believe idea. something exists that doesn't exist. Am I Maybe right, Charlie? Just the truth. Here's a question now. I mean, it's so, Phil, it's kind of obvious. If you think about it, Trump's losing. He's losing the battle with the virus, and he's losing poll numbers. So now he wants to be the law and order president, and he's sending him into cities to show that, look, I can take care of you. Well, he's basically saying the cops can't do their job then. Yeah. Trying to just divert the attention because he sees how it's going. Well, Come on, when do we use military in cities? Well, <laughs> well, also, when do we use military to stifle to stifle dissent? You know, well, uh, you, you know. You- I mean, there, there. Oh, this thing was this thing wasn't even a problem at the point that they went in there. It, it had been a problem a few weeks earlier, but it wasn't by the time they yep. got in there, and they've turned it now into a big problem again. Yes, Charlene. Are you talking about Chicago? Or? No, we're talking about Portland. Portland, okay. Because is that where uh, that that woman uh, governor called, uh, you know, for help from the feds? The mayor? He, no, she, yeah. only, she only asked help from the FBI and DEA to help fight drugs. That was Portland, okay. Was, she was actually just making a point. She was just kind of going, look, you know, I mean, if, if we really needed their help, We'd ask them. We would be more than happy to have them come in and help us. But we don't want them just to come in and fucking with their military, you yeah. know, uniforms. Like, like Portland and, never asked for them to come in. Yeah. yeah. Here's my I question. Together. Where was the secret police in Michigan when yeah. folks stormed yeah. the state house yeah. with yeah. guns yeah. about as long as the height of my body yeah. and had signs saying that the governor of Michigan should be lynched? Well, yeah, that, that was up. okay that because that was a white person crime. That was, they were going to bring that up. Protest. Peace. Well, was it really? Yeah. Was it people getting knocked over? Yeah. And no riots. Here, 
Oh, it's half something. right. Go look at some film, Phil. They had to call Wait off the legislature. Kevin is trying to say. Riots. Oh, Kevin's trying to say something here. Yes, Kevin. Peaceful, peaceful protest with long guns, automatic rifles, yeah, automatic guns, and then calling for a lynching of the 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 governor. Guns to a peaceful. That was peaceful. Right. And if, if, those, if you reverse that and put black people in yeah. there, what would happen? It was a lot more peaceful than what's going on for the last. No, 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 no. In Portland. Because what? Because what? They didn't shoot the guns. But let, you know, how, how, guns how, how big do you, uh, uh, how, 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 how big an area do you think these demonstrations in Portland cover? That was brought up at the at the hearings, and and uh, Barr didn't have nothing to say about that. Right. Yeah. What about the, the size wow. of it, the the area yeah. size? The, I, I, I the talk, only thing I, he could come up with was the yeah. fact that it wasn't federal property. I talked to Ronnie. I talked to Ronnie, who lives in Portland. She says mm -hmm. it's one street. It's yeah, that one street. Third and Salmon. Third and Salmon. The courthouse is. Yeah, one street. Where hold. the courthouse is, okay. and that's what they're protecting. It, they're protecting it from what? Paint? No, from fire uh, from fire. From, uh, yeah. Oh, fire? oh yes. Oh yes. By the way. You uh, see the weapons uh, that they yeah, took? Yeah, I saw them? that. There was a, they had two jars with two rags in them, and that was a Molotov cocktail. There was no gasoline in there. And then a couple of casings, uh, cases of, 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 of bullets. Now, does that really look like it was a setup? Did you see the... It was a the setup, fire, Phil. They, it was a weapons. setup. It's not a setup. Yes, it they was. Caught, you caught you red-handed, boy. You would have been. You would. You would have thought Hitler was a great guy back in the day. Yeah. You know, yeah. but he Hitler's not. He, he's he's going. He's going lighter on the Jews than they deserve. That's really what he's doing. You know, he's really a good guy. You probably would have supported him because he he hated America. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You probably would have supported him because he was a thug. Uh, a jackbooted thug, and you seem That's to right. side with those people. I also we left out the Nazi side, the, the, the swastikas on monuments. Let, let, uh, just be quiet a second, Phil. <laughs> if Charlie wants to say something here. There were, uh, wasn't there a firehouse burned down in Arizona? Is he going to send the jackbooted thugs to Arizona for that? Oh, I haven't yeah. heard one rumor of that. Yeah. Well. Yeah, you know, we live in a. Uh, this is a, this is a, a banana republic we're living in now. Is a firehouse federal property? <laughs> a a firehouse is not it. federal property. There's no it's federal local, property local. being threatened in Chicago, but he's sending the yeah. jackbooted thugs well, there. A firehouse is not federal property, Phil. Uh, That's why he didn't send in your thugs. Oh, what about the state house What's that to do with Chicago? He said he sent in Chicago because all the murder. Either. Ah, I see. So Strick, when he beat the shit out of the Navy veteran about five blocks away from the courthouse, that was in defense of the courthouse. Come now. That's so. That's uh, they yeah, said that yeah, yeah. they run over. You know what? You don't even believe your own Robert, shit. Robert, <laughs> by the way, by the way, there, there's, there's our theme. There's our theme. Uh, and uh, uh, everybody, everybody play nice now. Everybody kiss each other. <laughs> nice. Make up. Say you love each other. Yeah, here you go. Let's yeah. go, Rangers. Okay. If they get to play. Uh, Saturday. Uh, Saturday? Okay. I hope they don't get the COVID because I'm yeah, not betting on the Florida Marlins. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Phil, thank you. Thank you to Charlie Wallace. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, John Larkin, whatever your name is today. Uh, Jeff, <laughs> thank you. Thank you to uh, Kevin. Thank you to uh, 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 Tony. Thank you to Brian. Been a little quiet tonight, Brian, but that's okay. And thank you to Charlene. Uh, why don't you all be give a big wave goodbye, and I'll wave back at you and say, wave back at you. There we go. See there, I'm waving back at them, and they're waving goodbye. Okay. That's our uh, citizen panel for tonight. Thanks to all of them for having joined us. Uh, and uh, Jack Bishop is next with the intersection over most of the same cabinet, and he'll be assembling a new panel if you want to join it uh, he does that on skype so he'll give you the information on that and uh, we'll be back again tomorrow night uh, uh, with more of this kind of nonsense same time same station in life and in the meantime as always if you see her 
tell her I love her. And stay safe. And you know you got to wear a mask, okay? Because that means you care about other people. Okay. Bye, everybody. See you tomorrow.